Hey chemistry slackers, I know you didn't do your readings, I didn't either, but today we're going to talk about nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions with carboxylic acid derivatives. So since you guys didn't do any of your readings, we're going to have to start from the beginning. So what makes a carboxylic acid a carboxylic acid? Well, if you look over here, this blue group is the defining characteristics of a carboxylic acid. The carbonyl group, that's a C, double bonded to the O, and the C bonded to the OH, this in itself, carboxylic acid. If you see it on a molecule, that's it. So what makes a carboxylic acid a carboxylic acid derivative? Well, what you got to do is replace this OH group with a Y. And what is this Y? Well, it could be chlorine, make an acid chloride. It could be an acid anhydride. So that's just like a mirror image right here. Or it could be a thioester, so connected to a sulfur and another R group. Or it could be an amide or an ester. So where do I see these in real life? Well, acid anhydrides, easy. That's film base. Thioesters, ATP, you need it for life. Amides, Kevlar, bullet protection. Polymers, right there. And esters, esters around everywhere. And speaking of esters, let's say, oh, I was at a party last night, and as a prank, my friends decided to put nail polish. That's right, nail polish. And I've been scratching away at it, and I really want a fast way to remove it. Luckily, I did my chemistry readings, and I find out that nail polish remover is actually ethyl acetate. So how do I make ethyl acetate if I'm in the lab? Well, simple. I take out my trusty smartphone and I find out that ethyl acetate is really composed of acetic acid and ethanol. If you look closely, acetic acid really is this part of the ethyl acetate. And this part of the ethyl acetate is really just the ethanol part. So I can't really just smash these two molecules together, right? Um, what I need to do is remove this OH group. So that's my goal, to remove this OH group, use this as a nucleophile, attack the C here, and bam, nail polish remover. So, how'd I go about doing that? Well, there's, there's a couple things you need to know before tackling this problem. So, the first thing you need to know is the reactivity of your acid. You gotta look at your acid, more specifically, the carbonyl group. And look what it's connected to. Is it connected to a C and three giant R groups? Or is it connected to a C with some small H's? Sterically unhindered or sterically hindered? So you might be asking yourself, you know, how does sterical hindrance affect reactivity? Well, let me give you an analogy. Let's say you're at the club and you see a really hot person. C, right here, at the right at the carbonyl group. Now, are you going to approach this hot person if they're surrounded by three really buff guys or three security guards, or are you going to approach that C if they're surrounded by, you know, three really hot girls or guys? Which one's easier? In my opinion, I think it's easier to approach someone that is not surrounded by bodyguards that are surrounded by friendly people and that's what this sterically unhindered acid is it's friendly it's ready to react it's ready to mingle so to see if you understand what i'm talking about let's do a quick quiz so i got this nucleophile healer and he's looking to mingle which one do you think he'll mingle with the first person over here or this guy. Now, remember what we talked about. One that's more sterically hindered, so surrounded by big bodyguards, or one that's surrounded by, you know, not a lot of people or like not bodyguards. What do you think? Just choose one. One or two. 